So one way to look at flourishing is to understand, um, you know, is there is there a difference between material flourishing, social flourishing, and spiritual flourishing? So where do we find people who are most alienated from themselves, from others, from nature, and from the sacred narratives that that give people a, a deep sense of meaning? And on the other hand, where where do we find people who feel most fully alive and empowered to care for each other? What are the really most important elements of flourishing for people around the world? Is there something common to all humanity? Is there um, kind of a shared story um, across all of these groups of different faith traditions or no faith tradition at all? Is there some kind of essence here or are there really important distinctions to be made? But unpacking the various domains of well-being is really important to the work that we're doing on flourishing around the world. So we are going to gather people from four continents, from six countries, to discuss how human flourishing can be the key to accelerating sustainability in the world. And the idea is to learn from each story, not only the Rwandan story, but the Colombian story, the Albanian story, the Indian story, the Zambian story, the Costa Rican story, because each context has its own story and its own way of promoting human flourishing. So the idea is very much to share experiences and learn from each other. And it really is focusing on the fact that everyone's brain adapts in response to their environment and according to the uniqueness of their genetic background, and that over time, that results in really diverse trajectories of cognitive development, behavioral development, and, and brain development. And as a scientist, that's a really fascinating thing to study, but it's also a real challenge to think about how we can figure policy. You know, dignity is at the core of this. Uh, for the longest time, you realize that, um, you know, the, the focus, especially on the African continent, has been to eradicate poverty. But I think you know, we need to set a new level for ourselves in terms of what are we actually aspiring to. Um, we've come to the realization that, you know, uh, Africa is a very young continent. And because of access, you know, to technology, uh, the young people have rising aspirations, you know, which are very different from what we've seen in the past. Um, and, you know, at the core of it, we need to make sure that they have dignified and fulfilling lives. But one of the, the goals is to to strength our network so um, not only just to know each other but to talk to share ideas about how can we promote this in the region not only in Colombia or in Brazil or in Mexico but also with a network mm -hmm. of uh, researchers and um, professionals and educators and teachers uh, we can we can create um, and a common goal for the region. There is a misperception that listening is a passive behavior and it is the speaker who determines the, the conversation. And this is, this is quite wrong. And this is a, the misperception and the listening actually determines at least 50% of where the conversation is gonna go. And um, so uh, having learned all of this impact listening can, can, can have, and even the the, um, the advancement that we've made from what I felt that no one cared about it 11 years ago to having the opportunity to organize such a workshop and bring such um, esteemed researchers to it is a very exciting milestone. Well, I mean, I think what Kathy and I really share is, you know, we're both committed to the idea that religion and spirituality uh, really do uh, contribute to human flourishing. Um, it's well known in, in a variety of fields that people that are more religious or more spiritual um, are happier, they are healthier, they're more embedded in their communities, they're more pro-social, um, and, you know, they report uh, maybe being more, more virtuous in certain ways. And so we thought this was a really critical area that could contribute to the study of human flourishing. Uh, because of all of these benefits that have been identified in a variety of, of multidisciplinary fields. I think uh, 
the central idea is that we are putting forward is uh, to consider care as a true driver of uh, intelligence, um, as a real hypothesis uh, in which we want to explore how technology um, can lead us in uh, into um, a different possible path for humanity. And I guess um, because technology has changed uh, really the way society functions, and uh, this includes uh, AI, deep learning, but also virtual reality, the internet in general, all of that um, is changing the way uh, humans are interacting, their place, but also maybe uh, their meaning um, and the nature of uh, the way we consider ourselves selves. We want to investigate based on both ancient traditions and perhaps newer ones um, under different uh, perspectives, explore uh, what it means to be uh, a self uh, and what it will mean in the future. I think there's a, a value here of disagreements don't necessarily need to mean alienation between people. Um, the solution is not to kind of make all disagreements go away, but rather to understand disagreements and use different perspectives for new information, for growth, for learning more about ourselves, for learning more about others. And there's something in the workshop, I think, where we're going to try to live that philosophy together. We wanted to do this workshop because we feel that um, when we think about the futures of AI and human flourishing, far too often we're in defense mode. We're thinking about how do we avoid this bad future? How do we avoid that bad future? But we hadn't seen a lot of people um, really working on, well, what are the elements of the future we should be working towards? Um, so we wanted to do a workshop that would allow us to bring together people from academia, from the corporate world, from foundations and philanthropy, and from the futurist community to explore together um, what uh, a life uh, lived with uh, humans and AIs um, in which humans flourish, what that world might look like.